Good morning, good morning. Just gonna post this on my Facebook. Hi, Paul. How are you? Oh, wow. We've got some early birds here. How's everybody doing today? We got a nice little dump of snow. It's still snowing. Um, bless my dad. Uh, we have a snow blower in the garage. And uh, even before I was up this morning, I I'm telling you, this man, he's in his mid 80s. And um, not only had he shoveled the driveway, which is huge. Like I said, we have a snow blower. Um, he's already done an hour on the treadmill. I don't know. Uh, I'm talking old people goals here. Um, and he's, I've been so busy. He's also um, been helping out um, with me getting all my orders and stuff ready and prepared and everything like that because I've been kind of a little bit busy. Um, as you know, I keep saying that I've been busy, haven't I? So I wanted to make a few announcements before I get going. It is 10 o'clock, so I think people are starting to join. Um, I just wanted to start off at first with, uh, hi Dali. Um, I just wanted to, I was just Dali talking about um, <laughs> dad. Um, he shoveled the whole driveway even before I was awake this morning. And then he's already done an hour on the treadmill. He's had breakfast, he's having his coffee, and he's probably talking to you actually while you're watching me. Um, and he's been helping me with my orders and he's been preparing kits for you uh, that are in the mail um, because we have those workshops coming up in the UK also. So he's been very busy helping me out. I'm so blessed um, to have family here. That helps me when um, I get stressed and friends too. Peggy, uh, people that come over and <laughs> and all those that offer. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, he needs a light up. I know, Paul, we told him either it's a driveway or the treadmill, but no, um, I think he gets an extra hour early when it snows, so his girls don't have to do it. And uh, he's just old school, won't use a snowblower. But anyway, um, that's dad and everybody who knows him loves him. Uh, I know, man, you've known dad for longer than you've known me. Um, yeah, you, you were part of the family even before I was in the picture. So, yeah, we always have nice little stories to share. And, uh, yeah, let's see. Hi, Debbie. Nice chatting with you this morning. You're always such a delight. Um, oh, let me see. I've got my volume on, on my um, laptop here I can hear myself talking so I just wanted to start off with a few things because we've got quite a few people who already joined I just wanted to start off with thank you to everybody who's signed up for the project on Saturday it's by Stamperia Pink Christmas so we will be making this beautiful um, canvas here hi Wendy oh sorry Wendy I always say it out loud um, this beautiful, it's got so much little detail on it um, using the snow paste, uh, snow crystal paste, ice crystal paste, uh, one of the Sizzix dyes, Christmas time. And it's just, honestly, it's, a, you know, when you look at scrapbooks, you can literally take a page or two pages and you can make a gorgeous creation. Now, as most of you know, out of the three sisters, I'm like the biggest tomboy. And I like to be rough and tumble. But once in a while, my pink side comes out. So this was me channeling my girly side. Uh, totally not me, but um, I quite like it. This is actually a continuation of one I did last year with the pink Christmas. And we had the deer scene in the dome. 
a um, couple of you are taking kids because you're not here so I'm really grateful for that and I've actually got three custom orders for this that are being made so it'll be a nice little class which is great for social distancing on Saturday and I'm looking forward to it and your supply list will be out sometime soon okay so that's coming up Saturday let me give you a close-up look at that look at that dome so cute and let's see now last week i said to you guys if i get time <laughs> because dad's been helping me i got time i would have some card kits i'm going to tell you right now i only got i think five or six sets left because sometimes when i say i'm going to make card kits on facebook live people say just set me a kit aside before i've even made them which is such a huge compliment but um anyway here they are so let me know if you want to set um they use the snow ice pen i don't know if you can see it in the light here but you can see a little glimmer of right there a little glimmer of it hi nikki a little glimmer of it there so this is card one and this base says northeast southwest because this here says the north pole so i was trying to be a little bit smart um this is la ocean and i've added my own die cuts onto here um these are actually peggy's die cuts thank you peggy for lending these to me and this is using the stamperia arctic antarctic paper and this is the cutest little bear and i don't know if you can see his little um snow little uh it's the ice effect paste it's right there it's so shiny um i don't know if you can catch a glimmer of that absolutely gorgeous thank you dally and i love love him and these also have die cuts so everyone will have a die cut and each two will be matching and they've got lots of mat and layering so this is all done for you all the die cutting is done for you so these two will have the same die cut so there's matching there um then this one here is um the south pole so we've got the northwest east south there and again it's got a lot of the ice crystal pen on there and this set goes with this one, the South Pole and uh, the North Pole. Okay, men, I got one set aside for you. I will make it today so I can give it to you on um, Saturday. And then we have the gorgeous whale. And he has the matching die on this one. So there you have it. This is my card kit for this week. I will try and get more done. They are absolutely so cute. And it's using the sheets of the Antarctic, Arctic, Arctic Antarctic Stamperia paper. So there you have it. I will put these aside so they don't get dirty. So everybody knows November. I well, I hope everybody knows. Um, November's paper is November's paper. November's. <laughs> oh my God! Tongue tied here. The competition for November with Dali and I is um, the color brown and with the theme we've kind of gone steampunky vintage it's really kind of whatever your um, thoughts are on that your interpretation of vintage your interpretation of steampunk and um, you want to throw make it foresty you want to make it however you want to do it um, but brown is the color that we're really looking for. Again, the rules are get it in by the 28th of the month. Uh, we will judge the first week, Dali and Paul for submissions on my group and I for the submissions on Dali's group. And having said that, congratulations to Min for her wonderful submission. I am so glad I was not voting because there were amazing submissions on my group. And congratulations to Tina and also to everybody else who submitted on Dali's site. Wonderful creations. So without further ado, uh, I thought why not do a Facebook Live doing my interpretation or giving you some inspiration on the color brown, um, which when Dali told me, I was like, I got no idea what am I supposed to do with brown like brown I don't know and then um 
you know, when she says, well, it's going to be like a steampunk vintage thing if you want. I was like, okay, I can do that because I'm more that style than I am, like I said, the pretty pinky style. So look at this tag. Look at the back of it. <laughs> this is just like, it's not a very big tag. I mean, if you look at it, it's a tiny tag. Um, sure, Judy, I'll put you down and, and thank you. But it's a tiny tag, but look at the impact this little tag has. So I wanted to just do this. It's very 3D. I just wanted to show you how to quickly put something together um, that is very, very brown. And um, using a couple of uh, mixed media techniques along the way, uh, mainly how I made the background 3D um, raised, very raised look here, very kind of bubbly kind of look. Um, oh, thanks, Min. It is a lot of fun. I'm glad we're inspiring you guys. So there we have that. Now, what did I use on this? Can anybody guess which stencil I used? Da da, the Pip Art stencil. We used um, primer, which is black. 3D powder. I used, um, this is by Emerald Creek, just Java embossing powder. Drop my lid on this. I used red media mist. I used brown media mist for my main color. Uh, don't even ask me what's happened to my wax paste, it's so dirty. Um, wax paste gold, uh, finishing wax white, heavy body gel, and I may or may not use this today. I did use it in the other one. And our trusty rust effect kit, because that works really well for our brown um, theme this month and then i have the ranger vintage photo oxide to distress my sides hi margaret and then i have a little box here of bits and bobs these are just leftover papers you can literally see where i've cut out of my balloons and things so this is just leftover stuff that I have some stickers and things see I'm going to incorporate those into my piece so let's get started I'm just going to move some of these things off my table so that we can just focus on what we're doing because I have quite a bit of stuff here today so we're going to start off with the primer paste and the 3d powder and this is just like i said a wooden blank okay let's make sure that you guys can see everything okay maybe move that down a little bit okay so the first thing that you want to do i have my bucket of water here today the first thing that you want to do is you just want to take some of your black primer And what you want to do is um, put this down onto a mat like this. Probably don't need this much, but we will better to meet more than less. So I'm not oopsie daisy dirtied my brush, uh, my palette knife there. Okay, we'll start off with that much. And then what you want to do is you want to come in with some of your 3D powder because what you're trying to do is you're trying to create a texture paste. So if you don't have texture paste, this is one way to make it. You want to hear that crunchiness in it. So, oopsie daisy, get myself dirty already. We'll give that a little bit more. Okay, that should be good. Put that away. 
pull up my baby wipe here. I haven't disappeared. Um, okay, let me wipe this clean first because I'm going to get this all over me. Okay, so you just want to go ahead and give this a good mix. And you're looking for a nice gritty texture. This is what's going to give you the 3D effect on your tag. Okay, so it kind of looks really gritty. Okay, so let's pull that aside. Let's bring our tag. And then basically all you want to do is just stencil wherever you feel like it. So I'm going to go for a bigger pattern here. There's no right or wrong way. I try to usually move in a certain way depending on how I'm going to do my um, layout. So I'm going to keep the layout pretty much the same. I kind of want to come around this way. So as you can see, I'm not too worried about it because it will all eventually um, get covered with the embellishments and whatnot. You can hear that grittiness, I'm sure, but that's what you want. You want a very kind of gritty feel to it. Okay. Oopsie daisy, that's quite gritty. Um, maybe a little bit too thick. I'm going to put this in my water. And then what you want to do is just come and mellow in, um, blend in some of those sides to keep some of it looking like it's all at one cohesive piece. So just come in and just put it down. Now you're probably wondering, that's going to take forever to dry. It does, um, but you want it, the heat quite direct and really on it because you want it to create this bubbly effect you almost want it to dry from the top down opposed from the bottom up so there you go that's your first step okay hi tina that's your first step done okay now what you want to do, while it's wet, I'm going to put this away so we don't get this all over us. While it's wet, you want to come in with your embossing powder. Okay? You don't want to dry this at this point. I'm getting black all over me today not paying attention okay so just grab a piece of paper that you're going to use and again this is java java by emerald creek I'm trying to get this now without getting my hands dirty oh the trouble i get myself into okay here we go and I didn't really put it everywhere, just little areas. Because I just want to keep that it is um, too dark for me when it's black. I need to have some kind of contrast with some of that black. And with brown being the color, wh why wouldn't I? Okay. So I will give you a close-up of what that looks like. So you can see it's not all completely black or brown. Okay, so this is what it looks like. You can see some black in there and you can also see some brown in there. Okay. Hi, Betty. I get to see you Saturday. Then what you want to do, this is where you want to come in and you want to dry it. Now, um, like I said, you want to take the heat gun quite close because this is what will make it bubble um, because the top will dry and then the bottom is trying to dry. So just give me a few seconds here while, well, maybe more than a few seconds while I give this a really good dry. Talk amongst yourselves.
So what I've done is I've given it an overall dry and you can see it's quite um, getting 3D. But what I want to do is now come in super close to, it's almost like burning the embossing paste on it. So can you see the difference in that? It's kind of like got this white kind of hue, high dye. And then where I haven't done it down this part, it's still kind of brown and black. But here it's taken on a different kind of whitish sheen, almost highlighted color, okay? Okay, so now I'm not sure if you can see this, but look how bubbled up that is. See how thick that is? So nice and gritty. I know, messy, messy, messy this morning. Look at my hands die. Um, and I've cleaned them twice. So here you can see where it's not so bubbled, but if you look on this side, look how bubbled that is. But you want that bubbled effect. And for me, the bottom needs to be a little bit more bubbled because I want some attention to that. You will see here, the bottom here is super, super bubbled. And here it was a little bit less bubbled um, just because I had a lot going on up there opposed to down here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna set this aside, let it still dry a little bit. And let's move on to our next step while that dries a little bit. I'm just gonna clean this off. I like using this parchment paper. We actually get it here. You usually get 10 sheets here at our like equivalent of the pound shop because you can actually then just throw these away. Probably not environmentally friendly. I might need to rethink that one. Um, just don't wrap your sandwiches up in them. So the next step is let's pull out our some of the pieces that we have cut um, that I already kind of fussy cut. So I've got three here that I fussy cut and what we're going to do is we are just going to come and distress those okay so I always when I'm distressing I first go in and do the outer edge now because this is quite a brown dark tag I do want to keep some areas quite light now regardless of what gets hidden on this cutout on the tag um, I still distress all the way around because sometimes I like to change the composition and nothing worse than something not being distressed because you didn't think you were going to use it. So yeah, this is just like I said, um, I had done a tag quite a long time ago and these are just, I had like this half sheet of um, kind of paper left over. This is from uh, Voyages Fantastiques by um, Stamperia, as uh, um, Antonis's book, I believe. And so I just thought, why not? You know me guys, I love using leftover stuff. So I'm going to now just gently start coming in a little bit on the sides to keep giving it that like vintage look. But my outer edge is going to be slightly darker because I already worked on that. So I've kind of doubled up. 
Yes, Min, the 3D powder, I believe, is also mixed with that primer um, changing with the heat. I do believe that because it gets like it is super, super gritty. And when I put it on, it wasn't as gritty. So for me, this is how I distress through the outer edge so it's slightly darker and then come in and then do your blending on top. Okay, so now that I have those done, I might come back and cut some more stuff out of this. I quite like it, but for now I think I am done with that. Um, I have a few options here. I had this old little piece left over I don't know from when I could possibly use that um, but regardless what I'm gonna do is I am going to show you how I did my wrist effect on my little octopus frame and the reason I'm going to show you that is because it's part of my original tag and it is a technique now if you notice on my balloon here, I've got like a really nice okra kind of um, hint going on there. And I've also got a red hint and there's also a hint of blue. So therefore I've pulled in some blue, my key is red and my rust effect is more on the yellower side than on a dark side. So I think you can see that. So for the purposes of this tag, I am definitely gonna keep this more of a ochre tone. Now, this comes like this. It's just a little frame with an octopus on it. Uh, we're not gonna do anything with the octopus yet. And I'm not gonna do anything with the back frame either, it, although I could. But I think what I might do is what I did on that tag was I just came in and cut some paper to glue it down like that uh, in the back. I just found the octopus looked a lot nicer and it brightened up my tag. So let's put this away for now. So let's go ahead and do the rest effect. I'll get my powder here. So. This is how I do mine. Uh, there's so many different ways that people do this. But for me, this is just, like I said, how I do it. There's no right or wrong way. I always go dark first and then I work my way to the light. And then if I feel I need to come back in with some darker or other colors, then I come back in and then I start working at it. Um, so I'm going to go in with the dark brown. Now, the other thing that those especially who've taken classes with me is I always put the 3D powder down. Mm, hi, Nicole. I always put the 3D powder down on the brown, the darkest color that I use, the first color that I use. And the reason for that is because as the shades get lighter, the lighter you go in obtaining the rust effect. So if the lightest color is okra, that means it's gonna get the least coverage. Therefore, in my mind, you get the least rust effect because you've not used the 3D powder until you use the yellow. So does that make sense? If you really want a good rust effect, always put the powder on the dark brown or the first color you use or the color you're gonna use the most. So for me, um, putting down the powder, you must do it while your paint is wet, okay? Don't do it when your paint dries. I always give full brown coverage. And I try to get my powder in, in little bits as I go. Because to me, that's the most important time when it's wet. Okay. And like I said, you can come back to your dark color after you're done. So 
See if I can't bring that camera down a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, so I'm going to leave the lids off that because we'll probably use it again. And again, come in with your powder while it's still wet. Now, then you want to, and this is it for me. I don't use a, uh, the 3D powder again. Once I'm done and I've got my coverage, I don't do it. So the next, so the first color was earthy brown. Now you're going to use reddish brown. I'm just popping mine off their um, bottles. Um, just find it easier that way. So just pick a little bit up, knock some back and then start going into your tag, just in areas where you want that little bit of red. And I always tell everybody, use the worst sponges, uh, worst sponges, worst brushes you've got because the stiffer and older they are, the better they actually work um, when you're trying to achieve the rest effect. Yes, I love this kit too. It takes all the guesswork out, right, Tina? <laughs> okay, next color is the red clay. Hi, Janet. We're just playing with the rest effect kit here. If I can pop my lid off here. I love the color red clay, um, looks like this. So again, just pick a little bit off, tap a little bit off. And as you can see, you need very, very little. As I had said earlier, the lighter you go, the less you're gonna need, okay? And the key is to really just make sure that you're blending as you go along. You don't want splotchy, splotchy marks. So right now, this is what it looks like. I don't know if you can quite see that. Okay. And then the final color is the okra. And I was talking about this color, saying that I wanted it to pop a little bit more because it is on my um, balloon. This is a very potent color, but I am going to go with this ochre look today because I just think it will make my tag pop even more. So just keep blending it in. Okay, I'm actually quite happy with that. So I'm not going to come in with any other color, but the earth brown because earthy brown because i just want to highlight the outside so that um the actual rest effect on the inside stands out more if that makes sense so i love doing rest effect i <laughs> i i like to think i'm quite good at it <laughs> what i mean is is that i'm not i i I just go with it. Um, I'm not too afraid of it. So what I'm doing is just highlighting the ends a little bit. I actually love working with rest effect. I think maybe that's what I'm trying to say. So just come in and highlight some of those edges. And now you can see that you're creating this gorgeous, um, this gorgeous shadow on there. Okay. And you just want to keep doing that and just go all the way around. Let's get some more paint out here. And I'll try and take a close up afterwards. Uh, the live is done so you can actually see all the detail. Now, when you're working on a larger surface, I like to let the paint dry just a little bit, but on a small surface like this, it's drying as we go along. And then I'm just going to come in on the insides to give it a definition here on the frame. Okay. So that is that. How easy is that? 
right? Okay, so now we are done this and I'll see if you can see what that looks like. Let me put it on the white here. Okay, so this frame is done. I mean, it's pretty much dry, but I'm just going to give it a little bit of a blast. Whoops. I'm just going to bring my camera back up a little bit. I know, right, Debbie? I love the wrist effect. Okay, so now let's have a look how our tag is doing. So this is doing pretty good, doing pretty good. It's not probably as dry as I like it, but it's doing pretty good. I'm just seeing. Um, I'm just gonna check out some of my layout here. This is my thought process when I do my layout. Um, nope. And I don't mind, as you guys who know me, don't. I don't mind having things off my sides. Um, keeping them in let's see what have I got here so got a couple of balloons here so I have this balloon here I'm just gonna tuck this one behind there like that a little bit maybe make this one a little bit different no not that far off Let's start with that. And you know, I really just do placement to where I think it needs to go. And I mean, I could start this off up in this corner too and trade it and do it this way too. It doesn't have to be the same as my last one, yeah? It can go either way. It really doesn't matter. But I was really just loving this balloon theme. And then I have my little octopus here. Do I? I might not use my key this time. I don't know. Uh, let's see. I've got a couple of wings here. See, you can do anything. You can just just look in your just look in your little stash that you have. Um, You guys know I like using numbers. There's a reason behind that. They're all significant to me. I just want the three and the eight. I don't like that there. But I do want my numbers in there. Hmm, maybe. And then something to pull that blue out with. So you get the idea. It's really, um, it's really, uh, you know, just just play with it. I guess that's the best way I can describe it. Um, if I wanted to put my key in there, I guess I could. This is just to make it build it even further. But you guys see where I'm going with this, right? It doesn't matter. I had some extra embellishments there. And so, yeah, so easy and quick. I love that about the effect. So there you have it. So basically, that's what's going to happen when it builds up. Now, I also said I had this thing here. So, I mean, I could totally change this around. If I really want to just keep making this really, really high. And now that's like super, super duper high. That's really high. <laughs> Maybe a bit too high. So really, it's just playing around with um, what you have. You know, I think I still like this, this tag here. So let's go with that. When I don't think... I don't think I want to use this, um, although it might give a good color at the end, being behind a very light color. But I think what I'm going to do is let's take these off and let's create our, let's go ahead and create our background. And let me show you how I did my brown background. 
So we're going to keep these out because we're going to be coloring these two little guys while we're at it. And in the meantime, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just looking for a placement for this in my leftover paper. Well, I'm not really too fussed. I really do like that blue color though. So just to give it some contrast. So let's do half and half. So it looks like he's in water with a wave. So all I'm going to do is we are going to, when I find my scissors, we are going to cut that out. And where I put my scissors, are over there. I forgot I was cutting ribbons earlier. Okay, so this is nothing, I mean, just um, this is going to be hidden. So you just want to cut. This is how you can use leftover scraps. You know, if you're anything like me and you have a hard time tearing open a scrapbook pad, well, once you've torn it open, look, you can just keep going back to it. So there you have it. And I am just gonna quickly glue this down with some heavy body gel. And we'll set this to dry for a minute. Okay, I want the kind of water at the bottom. And then I'm going to see what he looks like. And he looks mighty fine in there. Okay, so we have that. Okay, we're not too far now to go. So that was just the heavy body gel mat that I used. I like the mat because if it dries, it's transparent. But the good news about it is, is that it doesn't show. Whereas if you use the shiny, it will show. Okay, some more messy stuff here, Di, coming up. I just want to clean up some of this um, rust effect powder. So, this is what we're going to do. We're going to put our little tag in there. Sorry about the glare. And this is where we are going to come in and we're going to use our Media Mist Brown. It doesn't need shaking. I'm not sure why I'm shaking it. Now, I want to keep a lighter color at the top and a more darker color um, towards the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spray a little bit of water where I want it a little bit lighter. So just regular water sprayed where I want it lighter. And then I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to spray. And I'm doing this very gently uh, and quite close because I don't want to get it on my laptop. Okay, and then what you want to do is you want to come in and dry this. When I actually was um, doing this yesterday, I looked at this and I just loved it as it was. I just, I don't know why. I just loved how it looked. I Don't ask me why. So now we've got this bit, which is quite light. We want to keep making this darker. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and um, color my brushes hard. Uh, color the sides here first, just because um, 
I didn't get a chance to tidy them up earlier, so I will have to tidy them up after. Although, albeit it is mixed media, so we don't do tidy, right? Now you can see why my tag at the bottom got dirty because I had had to put it back in here. So now to highlight the dark parts, you've got this gorgeous light color going on there. What you want to do is you actually just want to take your um, lid off here and you can actually, I'm just gonna remove this a little bit here for now. And actually just go straight into the bottle. And what you want to do, you start wanting to darken these areas here gradually, okay? Because this is where you want that dark look to be. And this will give your tag some contrast, okay? So you're just gonna come in and it's quite watery anyway, so it flows really well. And basically what you're trying to do is create a little bit of shadow around your work. So you can see the difference already in the tag, how it's getting darker at the bottom and lighter still at the top. So you wanna keep doing that just on the areas where you want it a little bit darker. So for me, like I said, um, I want it kind of shadowed around where my stenciling is. And then you just keep coming in till you achieve the darkness that you are actually looking for. And you can dry in between, um, however you want to do that. It doesn't really matter because you're putting down the same color. So it's not like you're um, coming in with two different colors and you're gonna cross contaminate or anything like that. Okay, I think I'm good with that. So I am going to come in and dry this up. Okay, I'm just gonna highlight some of those sides in here a little bit. And I'm just dipping the end of this in there. Okay, I think you guys get the gist of what I'm trying to accomplish here. Okay. Hi, Pooja. Okay, so, sorry, I should show that before I drop it there. So this is what it looks like right now. And mine is still quite wet because I know I didn't let my primer and texture paste dry but you see now how by almost trying to 
burn the top of your embossing powder, your texture paste that we made. Um, see how it's not brown? See how it's got a dusty effect to it? So this is what will differentiate it from the brown on the board of it all looking also brown. But do you see how beautiful that looks? Hi, Terry. So you got this gorgeous like dusting on it. Now we're gonna just put this aside and what we're going to do was I just actually <laughs> took my little um, octopus and then I have my key. Um, so for me, I had mentioned that because there's red in the balloon, I really wanted some red to pop. So all I did was I just took my key and I sprayed it red like this. I know it's a really bright red, and that's probably too much red. Um, and I just sprayed it and I just dipped it in. You don't have to do both sides, but they're done now. So this is what the key looks like. So it's such a gorgeous, vibrant red. Hi, Charlie. Now it's too vibrant for me. So what I did was I, oopsie daisy, I brought a little bit of the brown and I brushed it through very gently just to push this back a little bit. And now you can see it's gone from that bright red there to this kind of almost browny kind of um, almost orangey, if you will. So you can keep going in if it's still a little bit too dark. But for me, I needed it to pop. Okay, so now you've got this red and brown kind of grainy look. That's not so bright. So that's how I did my key. And then what you can do is just bring in some of that brown around the edges to again um, highlight that color that is inside. And you can see right there on the tip what that's doing. Okay. And then you can put this aside to dry. Okay, so it's not as bright as that red that was there. And then with the octopus, the poor little fellow, I just dipped him in what was left over like this. Though he, he didn't get any special attention from me. He just kind of got to play in what was kind of left over. And I'm going to need a little bit of brown on him so it's like waste not want not just um use what you have Come on, make it a little bit darker there i'm just still playing in this little little board thing there so like i need him to be different than the key because they're going to go on top of each other so he needs to be a lot more browner so maybe we'll come in and give him some more brown. But I want to keep a little orangey tinge around him. There we go. Now he's looking a lot browner and a lot nicer. Okay, so that is how you're going to create your... Mm, no. See, there's not much of a difference. So I'm going to make him a little bit more browner. This brown thing is not enough in my mind. So just go back and forth and play a little, right? But I'm being mindful that I need to keep some of that red in there because it needs to be a cohesive piece in my mind. Okay, I like him now. Now there's a big difference. Well, not a big difference, but a big enough difference. Hi, Jay Shuri. Okay, so that's it really. That's it for all your coloring. The good old um, red and brown media mist. Now, what you want to do is start to do some highlighting. Oop, can't even get my... Um, wax open here okay so i'm using the finishing wax white i've uh dali taught me this wonderful trick of if you want to do some highlighting just um come in with some of the white wax 
So now you're going to see me just doing some highlighting on there. Okay, and I'm going to just do that to some of the areas to further enhance them. So I find this a little bit easier than using the primer and brush because I feel I have more control with my finger when it comes to the highlighting. So I am loving this white wax. It's actually finishing wax. But um, it works great to highlight your work. So I'm not doing a lot because I want to keep some of this very gold. But there you can see now the difference, even further enhanced, okay? Now that was the only things that I actually um, highlighted with the finishing wax, was those two things. And I'm kind of doing this backwards because normally I usually glue everything down, um, but we're not gonna glue everything down. We are just gonna carry on before it's glued down. I've got my two here, and I've got my three here. And at this point, you can, whatever's on your brush, just use it. That's it, that's all you need to do. Just use it and just highlight some areas. You can also um, do that with this wooden piece, just wherever you want to. This is such an easy, because it's brown, it's not really going to matter um, on the brown pieces. If anything, they will give you some contrast. So I'm just using what was left over on my brush. Okay. I might cut this down. Now the next step, and one of my ni nicer steps that I enjoy, pardon me, I nearly swallowed my spit the wrong way, <laughs> is come in with the gold pentar wax. And this is where you can really start um, highlighting um, your pieces, okay? So your little octopus, you can see him, he's highlighted. Um, come in and highlight your frame here can you see that it's just so gorgeous okay and you can come do your numbers give them a goldy tinge wax is really good um, I mean, it comes in eight different colors and you can use it on so much to totally change how something looks. So look at how gorgeous and popped that is, right? So it's totally gold. I'm actually going to make it even golder, I think. And the waxes, they come in eight colors. So, I mean, it's not like you're short of colors. So let's do some on here to make that gold really pop. And again, I'm not thinking about this. I'm just putting it down where I just feel like putting it down. Mainly, I'm just trying to get it excess off my finger. But like I said, I honestly think because this is a brown project and when you're using chipboard, um, you're already halfway there. Okay, so now we have this bit. And we have this bit done. Um, let's come in and let's highlight all this gold. Because this is what is going to allow everything to tie in. You're still going to see the white behind it. Um, because what I'm doing is there's certain areas I'm not touching the gold on too hard. Like my tag here at the bottom is lighter in touch when it comes to the wax paste. So I've got it very dark at the top and then I kind of fade out at the bottom. Okay. And really now all you're going to do is you are going to put this guy. Don't worry if this is really stark because it's going to be um, covered. If you find it is too light for you, 
come in and um, you know go over it with the brown so now what we have here is we have our main piece which I think I might do off the side I'm trying to look for a kind of neat angle where it doesn't look so I could cut this I could cut this I'm not going to glue it down because um, I'll do that off camera. I'm just going to do what I think, how I want my placement. I'm going to bring the balloons over to this side, I think. This is not how it might end up by the time you guys see it. No, I don't like that. I do not like that. So maybe I will do this here. Let's see what are the little bits and bobs I've got here. Um, I could actually come in this way this time to change it up a little bit. Keep that kind of square thing going. My little octopus in the middle. I have my numbers here, 38th year my papa was born. And let's see if I want the key in there. Um, see, my composition changes all the time. It all depends on what I'm feeling like. What I can tell you is take photos every time you put out a composition. And then what I do is every time I change it, I take a photo and then I compare my photos on my phone, I just flip through them to see which composition catches my eye or which composition really works for me. And that's how my thought process works on this. However, everybody is different and you can, you know, work this however you want to. There's no, I might need to cut some of this off. Then again, I could bring the 38 on there. But then I don't like that because that's too high compared to my middle piece here. And then let's put this here. And let's put my little octopus in the middle. And I don't know, I had these wings here and I really wanted to kind of play with them. Um, I don't know where they will go. I don't know if I want them tucked behind this round thing. Which means they would then come like this, which I don't like. So I kind of lose half a wing there. See how picky I am? So maybe they can just go behind him. Sorry, I'm just talking to myself as I go through my process. But I do really like those wings. I'm just gonna pull these out a little bit to give it a little bit more oomph. Bring him there. And I think, I might need to cut this bit off, but I think I am very, very happy with it. Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> so, other than gluing this down, here is my today's version. I can't really show you the depth of this. But there you have it. Of course, I, like I said, I'd have to glue this all down. But really, um, today is about the inspiration for the brown and to show you that is really easy to make a tag. So there you have it, two tags, very similar, slightly different layout. One has got wings, the other doesn't. This is slightly longer. This I will chop down because it's not pleasing to my eye and I'm missing all the goodness that I've created at the bottom. So I would probably just slice off this much and um, yeah, I'll take a picture and then I'll play with the composition. So, 38 is the year my dad was born. 92 is the year my son was born. 
so they have it two tags very similar um thank you min i absolutely love how the red pops out i love how the rust effect here the yellowy color picks up like i said from my balloon i've got the red here and the blue in the little cogs and the cogs are already colored that color um, i didn't do anything to them but there you have it i really really hope um you enjoyed it thank you jay shiri i loved doing this tag i just cannot believe that half a piece of paper um cut a clock out of it a couple of balloons and my little um background behind this that i glued down to make my little frame so it looks like um water to put my little octopus now i could probably even just put the octopus on the paper like that too and uh, thank you terry and put him down like that but if i was going to do that i would probably make uh, the octopus um oscar oscar the octopus more um red so there you have it this is my inspiration for you guys to take a brown and have your way with it and show you how gorgeous these media mists are and how you can create a gradient variation effects from light to really dark um, and the hair is quite light you've got light here super dark and i also want to show you how you can create your own texture paste with the products that you already have at home so i hope you guys really enjoyed this i loved making this tag i actually put it together yesterday and uh, i was so excited to do it and uh, i sent the pictures to dali this morning and uh, she says wow 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 so <laughs> anyway uh, thank you janet um, i hope you guys all have an amazing day i have cleaned my hands and i think i might have to left i don't know i'll have to check back in the comments but today's card kit i'm not going to touch it too much um i don't want to dirty it today's card kit was arctic antarctic and it's got the ice effect on it if you want a kit you need to let me know i will be putting these together for you everything is done the layering uh, the cutting the die cuts that are used on it and all the little embellishments great cards just in time for christmas if you want to set let me know okay guys don't forget that dali is doing her facebook live tomorrow i have seen what she is making i am so super stoked more rice paper goodies and also um dali is on memories paper craft on november the 18th i believe it is it's a wednesday and um don't forget to watch her she's doing a free online workshop and that is a group that you want to watch because um well one we love tamara and two she has the most amazing people on and hopefully i'm going to be on there soon so stay tuned so dally tomorrow and then dally thursday and i had also told you guys last week if i could get my act together I had got a couple of boxes of Fabrico Decorum in from uh, the Ukraine, finally. They allow shipments in from there. I've only waited uh, since February, since COVID hit. So I will Thursday, tomorrow or today, I will post a time. I'm going to do a live that's just exclusive for whoever's uh, on the group, whoever wants to watch. Uh, at this point, I don't know if I'm going to be sending a newsletter out about it. I'm not sure yet. And I'm going to just flip through some of the books and hopefully have some deals for you guys. Okay. Thank you, everybody. And, uh, oh, thank you, Terry. Thank you, Peggy. I think I am done now for the kits. Okay. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you for joining me. And uh, see, brown is easy. I hope you love the tags and saw how easy it is just to get a few things and throw them together. Don't look at that. That's part is coming off that's just totally ruining my look there okay guys thanks judy have a great day everybody see some of you gals on saturday bye